Howdy folks, it's your boy here, back at the end of another Aether Raid season. So today we're going to go ahead and do a quick little showcase, not really as in-depth as my usual Aether Raid showcases for defense, but we did get this new guy right here. We got King Freyr, who actually turns out to be a pretty damn good defensive mythic hero. So we're going to talk about my team setup for him right here, and we're going to take a look at some defense replays. Now, for a majority of this season, I had my old defense set up, and it took a hard loss at the first day, but then it did pretty successfully every other day. Literally, we did not lose a single fight besides the first one. So there wasn't really much of a need to change my old defense. If we go ahead and quickly take a look at it, it's already pre-prepared for Elamine. I've got Cordelia and Catria there. So unless you're running multiple copies of Elamine on offense, you're not really able to false start my triangle attack units and prevent my Veronica and Arvel from just going ahead and getting off triangle attack. But I do think the new defense team is slightly better. Maybe if even by just like a teensy weensy bit, it is still a little better. So we're going to take a look at it here. So first and foremost, we are running, of course, King Freyr, so I don't have to run Cordelia and Catria on the same team. Freyr, of course, with his new C skill, is able to just provide the whole team with a cleansing of status effects at the start of the turn, which is pretty good. It works on both phases as well, so enemy phase and your own phase. So the enemies can't just waltz right in here and start doing start of turn effects on you like... Elamine, for example, with False Start, or they can't stall you and expose you with Duo Thor, or also use Embla to turn off save skills and etc. We can actually quickly do a test, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about, and also why I think King Freyr is a lot better than we originally gave him credit for. Okay, so let's take Edelgard off here. We're just going to run a bunch of start of turn debuff units. So let, let's grab Yune, because Yune is pretty easy to just debuff the entire enemy party. We'll go ahead and take off Ninian right there, and who, who else is a really strong debuffer? So we have Duo Thor who does Exposure and Stall. We've got Embla for the um, Severance effect. She does Feud and also nullifies save skills. Yune does a whole bunch of stat debuffs. nilla has got Isolation, so I don't have Elamine, so I don't know who I would just go ahead and run there instead as a debuffer. I guess it doesn't really matter. Let's just hop right in like this. And we got to switch the season over to um, Chaos Season here real quick so we can demonstrate. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to line up Embla with the entire enemy team, of course, because that way she can inflict her debuffs. We'll have Mila in this corner here to try and isolate Mirabilis. And it doesn't matter if Yune or Thor are lined up. They just do their debuffs regardless. So right there, we had the visual effect, the visual cue for Dreamhorn go into play. And as you can see, there is absolutely nothing wrong with any of these defensive units. Whereas I would have normally been able to get off Severance here and also we would have been able to get off Isolation from Mila. So <laughs> King Freyr is a really hard counter to any start of turn debuffs. Also Thor with her stall and exposure. One of the more popular units in Summoner Duels, and also a reason why I think King Freyr can be a very potent unit to use in Summoner Duels as well as just Aether Raid's defenses. And Yune unable to inflict any red status debuffs here. Yune does stat debuffs as opposed to penalty effects, such as stall, exposure, etc. And none of these people here have any red debuffs on them. So as you can see, King Freyr is just an amazing team cleanser and able to do his thing at the start of either player's turn, which is really good. So we have him on the team there. He prevents Mirabilis from getting isolated, Cordelia from getting false started, and any other antics the enemies may try to do. On the team, we have Arvel here with Kanto Control, of course. We got double saves with Fomortis and Idun. Idun's got near save, and then Fomortis has got far save. Also gave him Miracle here so he can just guaranteed live whatever happens to him. So basically he's going to transform at start of turn because he's next to a dragon. And then he gets the special ramp when he transforms. So with um, Hardy Fighter in tow, he's going to drop Miracle down to a two-hit special. 
And then whatever first hit, as long as he survives, his second hit, he's going to have that miracle first safety. And it's pretty tough to kill Fomortis in only two attacks. Most of the time, you're going to kill him. If, if you are going to kill him, it's going to be with a damage reduction negating special attack, like from Legendary Krom or Duo Krom or somebody with Special Spiral 4, or Veronica who can activate her Enclosure special on the second hit. So instead of just going for, like, Aegis and um, Deflect Magic or Deflect Missile for the seal, I just went with Miracle to guarantee to live anything. So pretty solid stuff there. Also guarantees he can end the enemy action within four spaces after he's attacked. So pretty clutch. We got a Dune, of course. Arvel also has Hardy bearing on this team, so he can cut through Vantage-like effects. So... On Astra and Anima Season, it's possible we may run into Altina, <laughs> but really it's just there for Fallen Byleth, so Arvel can just shred her with ease. We have Rally Speed, of course, on Cordelia, so she can jump in and rally Arvel and then get danced by Mirabilis and then queue up a whole bunch of <laughs> really degenerate jumping and dancing tactics afterwards. And then we have Double Catapults with Duma and the Catapult. So no slot 3 or slot 4 bolt towers for you, <laughs> big RIP. If you have it in slot 5, which is the only other place I would imagine it being, I doubt anyone's running a slot 2 catapult or a slot 2 bolt tower. Having it in slot 5 can still be pretty effective, but it's going to miss out on getting Fomortis if it's in slot 5. And Idun just has so much health on this team because I'm running 4 freaking mythic heroes. So what is that, like plus 25? Wait, no, we have five Mythic Heroes on this team. We have Freyr, Duma, we got Mirabilis, we have Arvel, and we have Fomortis. Yeah, so five Mythic Heroes, that's plus 25 HP to Idun. So even if she gets hit by the Bolt Tower, she still has HP to spare to tank some shots. So not a big deal if it's going to be in slot 5. And any other slot that's relevant, we can just destroy it. So team has been pretty good actually had zero losses with it we didn't get to test it out for the full season like i said but we do have three replays that were hard wins so let's go ahead and take a look and see how we did here all right let me make sure animations are on actually because i mean we might as well watch the animations we don't have too many fights to take a look at here okay so this guy's running legendary crom we have naga to get some effective damage on dragons and the guaranteed follow-up Summer Edelgard, of course, one of the best scale forcers. Then we have Regan and Altina here. Okay. All right, so how is this guy going to approach this team? Let's see. Now, it is bonus season, of course, for Legendary Krom, so a lot of people were running him this season. And he is one of the few units that can actually threaten Fomortis, even with the Miracle build. So here we see that in play. He just one-shots Fomortis right there on the spot. All right, he's trying to get out of the way, so he's trying to hit and run style here, but unfortunately, that is not going to work out. So King Freyr, of course, with his isolation immunity and also false start immunity, allows you to run OG tactics here, like just having a singular, a singular unit with no assist and then having assists on everybody else to make sure that unit moves first, and then we can just go ahead and dance him to expand his reach there at the bottom. So this guy got caught lacking there. <laughs> we caught him off guard big time. And we ended up getting a KO. So let's take a look at the next two replays here. All right, so this guy over here, he's got a, a summer idiot right there. We have Maria as well to provide the miracle and healing effect. Then we got Seder to turn off my turns at the start of every odd number turn, I believe it is. And then Regan and Yuri for Kanto. Oh, that's, that's a very bold move. Wow, he just threw her in there? My god, man. Having absolutely no respect for the game. <laughs> this is a strategy games, guy. Guys, you do have to think every once in a while. Alright, so Arvel hops in there with his hardy bearing and also brave attacking. He's got color advantage on Fiorm here, so... Thanks to his A skill, we may be able to survive her counterattack. Did a number on her as well. She only barely survived that. 
And unfortunately for him, we still have Cordelia who can move again. So yeah, there we go. We get two attacks in right there with the Brave attack. We weren't able to ramp into Gale Force there because Fiorm had guard. But, I mean, it's all the same. We still managed to get our KO there. Okay, so I think he surrenders right away. Or no, he, he goes for a, a revenge kill on Cordelia. And then he surrenders after that. Gotta love that. People do that quite often. Just, like, before they rage quit, they kill the unit that messed with them. And then they get out of there. Alright, pretty funky. Oh yeah, Cordelia too. I, I forgot to bring this up. Cordelia, just like Edune, is getting a monster amount of HP from having five mythic heroes on the team. So 65 health on this Cordelia, goddamn. Yeah, not a unit you want to try to bait on melee, especially if she's getting the brave attack off. Okay, this is the real reason. This is the real threat. The reason why we have Hardy Bearing on Arvel there. We have a Farsay Fiorm. We got Fallen Maria. We got Flane. And then we have Hater and Naga. All right, is this guy going to be as gross as the last guy was and just throw his Byleth at me? Expecting her to tank, unlike the Fiorm. All right, let's see what happens here. All right, he goes for a gold serpent there with Hater first to get some buffs up. All right, we are able to go for our dance, and then Arvel comes in with Hardy Bearing. Okay, so we hit Violet twice in a row. Looks like she's barely going to survive, though. Yeah, 4 HP. Wow, pretty close. And then she's barely able to KO Arvel as well with her Divine Pulse. Now, unfortunately... <laughs> okay, actually, he did make it through the turn. I, I thought for a second Corellia was going to do some jumping degeneracy, but that's not exactly how it went. All right, Hater up against Freyr there. She's going to win, of course, because Freyr's not really built to take on mage units like that. And then some more repo tactics. He's really betting it all on this Byleth, huh? All right, so Duma's turn. It is Duma's bonus season, so he's getting some bonus stats here. Just some food for thought. <laughs> okay, but we are getting a quad, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, we've got Triangle Attack, and we've got Bold Fighter. And this Byleth doesn't have no follow-up on her. Or any support anywhere, so yeah, there we go. That's our one KO. Or no, we get we actually get a lot of KOs in this fight. Very rare to see Duma just putting in work like that, right? Usually when people run him, it's just so he can <laughs> act as a temporary catapult and try to hit their bolt tower. All right, so Corellia gets her double hits in. Looking pretty bad for this guy at this point. All of his offensive threats have been dealt with. So he's just left with a bunch of supporters now, and I still have both of my save units. So just a couple of examples here. Let me know in the comments as well what you guys have been able to cook up with King Freyr on defense teams. I think he's going to be more effective in Chaos Season than he is in Astra and Anima Season, surprisingly. Even though they did build him to deal with Elamine, I'm more afraid of Embla on offense in Chaos Season. Just being able to inflict feud on the whole team and also stop save skills is pretty annoying. And it makes Chaos Season impossible to make a defense for. So now that we have an answer for that, that is definitely going to help out. And on top of that, also, I think Freyr will be effective in Summoner Duels also, since he can heal off stall for units like Duo Thor and Reeve that may be trying to stall you. Also, the Duo Mark and Baby Lin, they have stall as well. So just... Just a lot of good places to run Freyr, even though most of us summoned on the banner not for Freyr, but for the rearmed Ingrid. I still think it's not a bad idea to have a copy of King Freyr. Although I'm not sure if I would recommend people summon for him, but he is a nice tool to have in the shed for sure. Alright, looks like this is going to be our final KO of this match, and we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video there, guys. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Let me know how you guys feel about King Freyr, and are you going to be running him in Summoner Duels or Aether Raids? And this is your boy Tacho signing out, and we are going to close out this season just barely managing to make it into Top 1K. 
Also, I think there's a Fey channel tonight. I think. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I did double check the data mine that had King Freyr in it, and there was a lot of evidence that may suggest a Fey channel. So if we're getting a Fey channel, it's probably going to be either tonight or tomorrow night. But I'm not entirely sure just yet. We'll have to wait and see. But that's all for now, guys. So I'm going to let y'all go. Happy days, happy trails, and I will catch y'all again on the flip side.